Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the five minute Facebook ministry. Giving all the honor to God. My name is Anthony Daniels, and I'm coming at you from Dubai, United Arab Emirates. And today we're coming out of the book of Romans, the second chapter, the 13th verse. That's Romans 2 and 13, and it reads out of the King James Version. For not the hairs of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now, this is uh, the book of Romans. These are the writers of Paul. And he's writing, he's talking about the law. And he's saying that, you know, it's not the heroes of the law who are just before God. And uh, I think a lot of people try to say that the law is not important. We're not under the law anymore. Uh, I even heard one guy say that, you know, when God chose the great prophets of old, like Abraham and Noah, it wasn't because they observed the law, uh, because the law doesn't make you justified. But I would argue differently, and I think this verse supports my argument that they were chosen because they did follow the law more than anybody else. And although the law didn't justify them, the love of God caused them to obey the law, to be doers of the law. And because they loved God, they were justified. And because they were justified, they were doers of the law. So as Christians today, you know, when we look at the law, especially the, the, the most famous laws are the Ten Commandments, and there are a lot more laws. Um, and then there are some things that, that, uh, that God has directed for us to do in the New Testament from Jesus. The doers of the law shall be justified before God, not before man, before God. I mean, as, as far as man is concerned, um, if you are a doer of the law, you know, probably, people probably look at you, probably talk about you behind your back. I don't know who we think he is. He too good to do this. He too good to hang with us. She too good. Who she thinks she is. I knew her. I knew her before she got saved. She wasn't nothing then. She ain't nothing now. You know, that, that's what man is doing. But before God, you're justified. Regardless of what they knew before you became saved, what they knew before you gave your life to Christ, if you are a doer of the law, if you are following God's word, if you're living a life that is pleasing to God, you are justified before God. And the thing is, you know, that, you know, it doesn't matter when you start living by the law. You are justified. You know, there's people like myself. I've lived uh, in sin for over 40, 45 years, living a life of sin, you know, and, uh, you know, I've been living three years in the spirit, trying to trying to be trying to live a life that's pleasing to God, trying to follow God's will, reading my word, you know, praying all the time a lot. Uh, and those that time has erased those forty five years. Now that may not sound fair. You know, if, if, if man was doing that, I mean, nah, man, you, you got a lot of you got a lot of making up to do. But see, God loves us so much that He just forgets. In my case, about those four to five years, and He'll forget about whatever you've done. And when you become a doer of the law, you shall be justified. And you become a doer of the law. Now, under the new covenant, under the since Jesus Christ's resurrection, by accepting Him. Is your personal savior. And all your sins are forgiven. All your sins are forgiven. Now. You've got to. Develop that intimate relationship with Christ. So that you can understand. What he wants from you. And you can develop that faith. And that trust. Where you can stop living. A life that is pleasing to the world. You can stop living. Uh, after the lust of your flesh. And you can start living. After the will of the Spirit. And you'll be justified before God. And the thing about it is, a lot of people say it's hard to live a, a good Christian life. 
But it's not that hard once you get into it, once you trust God with it. God empowers you to live the life that he wants you to live. You just got to trust it. You got to trust it. And my new saying now, my new thing now is there is no balance. There is no balance. I think I said this last night. People say, hey, you got to have a balance. There is no balance. You got to trust God. You got to trust God. If you sit at home and trust God and you truly trust in God and you're just not being lazy, God's going to bless you because you're putting your trust in him. And we've gotten away from that. As, as we've evolved, as we've come up with all these inventions and all these gadgets that take away and pull away our time from praising and being with, spending time with our God, because I'm laying up on my bed playing a game on my iPad instead of reading my Bible. I do that. I do that. And I, I need to stop it. But all these gadgets, they take away from the time we can spend with God. And they, they empower us to believe that we can do more on our own, but we need to be trusting God. So I'm going to make that point tonight. Trust God. There is no balance. There is no balance. There is no balance. But the thing is, you know, you got to be following God's will. You know, you can't be, people who neglect their families, they're not following God's will because God wants you to love your family. He wants you to spend time with your family. You know, he's going to give you things to do, and he's going to give you time with your family also. He's going to allow you to take your family with you. You know, don't, don't abandon those you love because you're following God, because that's not God's, that's not the will of God. That's not the will of God. Now, if they are preventing you from establishing and keeping a relationship with God, that's a different thing. And the Bible talks about that also. But make sure you read your word and understand what it says about it. Mm. Ooh, that's all the time that I have. Hey, God bless you. God loves you, and I love you too. And I've been having some problems with Facebook, so if you are, if you log on, if you have an account with YouTube, you can subscribe, and you'll get an email of these videos versus just looking them out on Facebook, because Facebook, man, acting up on me, and uh, I'm not sure all of them are making it to my page, but hey, God bless you, God loves you, and I love you too. Have a great day.